Hello, my name is Wesley Aston, and I'm going to show you how I render a time lapse with using After Effects from Adobe. So first off, just open up After Effects here. It can take a little bit of time to open, but I've sped it up to, you know, get us there. Um, a few windows can pop up. I just say OK, and then this other window here will pop up too, I'm trying to help you start a project. But I'm just going to close it. But you can use it for other things. All right, so I'm going to go over to this window and double click. I'm going to search for my time lapse files, which I've put in a folder already. So it's only the folders I, the files that I want. All you got to do is click that first one, and you see it says Camera Raw Sequence. Just make sure that's clicked, and then say Import. So what it's going to now have you do is just edit one file using Camera Raw, and go in and make your adjustments how you want. Um, you know, brighten it, add a little color, some saturation, um, change the exposure if needed, whatever tweaks you need to do, rotating, any of that stuff. And then when you hit OK, all the others will follow along with that one edit you just did. So as you see, it's a little bit longer than I want, it's 32 seconds. So I'm going to right click on it again, say interpolate footage, and then I'm going to change it from 30 frames a second up to just a little bit faster. Let's go to 45 seconds. That's going to make it a little bit faster. So from 32 seconds down to eh, about 21 seconds here. Next, I'll just grab that and drag it down to my little composition icon. And then that creates my composition there. I always change my, my settings here to 16-bit depth rate. Um, just can make it a little bit higher resolution if needed. Next, you'll go over, make sure that's highlighted, your composition is. Go over and change the composition settings. Here you can rename it whatever you want. Uh, I'm just going to name this Sunset Time Lapse. Next, you'll just change the size of what you want it to be. Um, I'm going to make this for an HD, which is 1920 by 1080. And don't really need to change anything there, so we'll just close that out. Um, now it's going to bring in my clip. Well, of course, it's going to show it in this smaller frame, so I need to right click on it, transform, tell it to fit the composition width. So then that'll just shrink it down to fit into the size of that HD frame that we made. Now of course it's a little bit different from the size of your camera, so you're going to lose a little bit off the top or the bottom, but you just put it where you want. Next I'm going to go to File, then Export, Add to Media Encoder render queue. I use this to render out the file a little bit faster and gives you more options than what After Effects has. Um, you can do a lot of different things with it. It's, it's just nicer I think. Uh, once that comes in here automatically from After Effects then you can make your changes to where you want it to go and what type of file you want it to be as. So first I click here to save it, tell it where I want it to save and make sure it's the name you want and wherever it's going to go. Um, the next one you click over here and this is where you can change what type of file it's going to be whether it's a mp4, mov and depending if your windows or mac you have a few different choices of of file outputs. So for this sake you know I'm going to change it to a QuickTime And then on this Windows machine, I like using Photo JPEG. So for that, it gives me a little bit higher resolution. Maybe I want to make this my master file and go down. So under the video, you know, I can change some stuff. Under here, under the effects, I can add a little watermark. Click an image overlay. Go and find what image I've already created that I want it to be my watermark. And I've made a few different things for the videos. So I'm going to select this HD one. Adds a little watermark there in the corner for me. And then I can make it, you know, smaller or bigger, or maybe I don't want it quite standing out, so I'm going to drop the opacity down a little bit. But you can do whatever you want. And of course, I turn on for rendering. I want to use the maximum quality, especially if this is going to be my master file. Um, there's the frame blending, which is handy on some time lapses, but I don't always use it. Here's another option I like to use when I want to just do it for uh, YouTube or Dropbox or whatnot. Come up here and change it to H.264 so then I can save it as an MP4. Uh, I'm going to get rid of the audio. I don't really need any audio in this clip. 
Um, I come down here and then I actually change the bitrate up to about 80 or so. It gives it a little bit higher resolution, especially when I load it to YouTube. Get my maximum quality there again. Um, and then I, again, change it where you want it to be saved as. Here I can change if I want to cut out the ins and outs of the clip. And then this way I can preview where my end is. Maybe I had an extra couple of frames at the end I added into my time lapse that I don't need in it. I can just cut that out right here. And then just hit OK. And you would be ready to render this guy. I'm going to change it back. OK. And then once you're ready to go, just come up, hit the little play button. It'll start your render out. Uh, down here it will show you, you know, how long it's taking, how long it's going to take. Um, a lot of times a time lapse for me can take over an hour to render out. Uh, then you can just minimize that guy, let it go. You can save your project if you want to re-edit it later in After Effects, but you don't have to. It's pretty easy to put back together. Here is what my time lapse ended up looking like. And this was uh, one of my favorites over in Utah County. And there's Utah Lake at a, at a sunset. That's pretty awesome. Well, I hope this helped you out. Any questions or any ways you think I can improve this, by all means, leave me some feedback. Hey, thanks for watching.